In this video, we are going to study the Cauchy stress matrix. The material presented in this section was developed by Augustine Louis Cauchy in the 19th century. He was both a mathematician and an engineer. He has many contributions in mechanics, number theory, complex numbers, and function analysis. The theory of the stress that he developed is very important for the mechanical design of any component. First, we're going to understand the concept of internal forces. If I have a bar under external loads, and then I open the bar up and look inside the material, then I will find some small forces acting on the material points on that surface, exerted by one side on the other, and the two sides have equal and opposite forces. In fact, these forces are acting in 3D, so those internal forces are force vectors and each vector has three components in 3D space. The traction vector or the stress vector at a point can be found by finding all the forces acting on the area surrounding the point, the area with a value delta A, and the area has a, a normal vector N, and finding all the forces, all the force vectors acting on that area. The traction vector is equal to the force divided by the area, which basically is the limit as delta A goes to zero, the delta P vector divided by delta A. Invoking Newton's third law, every action has a reaction that's equal but opposite in direction. The force vectors delta P on this point are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction to the force vectors on the corresponding point on the opposite surface. And therefore, the traction vector on the surface with normal vector negative n is equal to the negative, the traction vector on the surface with a normal vector n. After defining the traction vector, we wish to know how to calculate that traction vector on a surface with normal n and how it changes as n changes. If the area changes, what is the new value of Tn, and so on. We will show that the distraction vector can be calculated using a matrix called the Cauchy stress matrix, and we will develop this by studying something called the Cauchy stress tetrahedron. First, we're going to look at a material under load. We're going to extract a cube from the material and look at it under a magnifying glass. And then we're going to look at three of its surface, the surface that's perpendicular to E1, the surface that's perpendicular to E2, and the surface that's perpendicular to E3. On each of these surfaces, there is a traction vector. The first traction vector is called TE1. This is the traction vector on the surface perpendicular to E1. The second is TE2, and the third is TE3. Each of these vectors has three components. So TE1 will have the component that I'm going to call sigma on 1, and the second component is sigma 1, 2, and the third component is sigma 1, 3, and so on. Knowing these stresses, or these traction vectors, I'm going now to look at a tetrahedron made out of four surfaces. Three surfaces that are perpendicular to E1, E2, and E3, and one surface that is perpendicular to a general vector n. And now what I want to know is how to calculate this Tn. Knowing these stresses that are acting or these stress components that are the traction vectors acting on the surfaces perpendicular to E1, E2, and E3. First, I can use linear algebra to show that the vector n multiplied by a n, the area, is equal to the area a1 multiplied by the vector e1, the area a2 multiplied by e2 and the area A3 multiplied by E3, where A1, A2, and A3 are the areas of the surfaces perpendicular to E1, E2, and E3. They are the triangular surfaces in the back of that tetrahedron. If I divide the first equation by a n, then the vector n is equal to n1, E1, plus n2, E2, plus n3, E3, where each of these small n's are equal to the corresponding a, divided by a n. 
I'm now going to invoke Newton's uh, laws of motion. The sum of forces equal to the uh, mass multiplied by the acceleration of that tetrahedron in three directions. In the first direction, the horizontal forces are sigma 1 1 multiplied by the corresponding area, sigma 3 1 multiplied by the corresponding area, sigma 2 1 multiplied by the corresponding area, plus the horizontal component of that uh, traction vector that I want multiplied by the corresponding area, plus the mass multiplied by the ground acceleration component in the horizontal direction is equal to the mass multiplied by the horizontal acceleration. Again, repeating in the second direction, and then repeating in the third direction, I get these three equations. Taking the limit as the mass goes to zero and rearranging the previous three equations, I will get the following equation. Tn1, Tn2, Tn3 is equal to sigma on one multiplied by N1, sigma two one multiplied by N2, plus sigma three one multiplied N3. So I can write it in this matrix form. Or if I call the vector Tn, the vector, the traction vector that, I'm, that has those three components, I call it Tn, this is equal to a matrix that I'm gonna call sigma transpose multiplied by the normal vector N. Again, if I look at that cube under the microscope, and if I take the moment around this particular corner, and if I ignore all the small terms, which at some point when we study the equilibrium equations, we're going to uh, know where these come from. Taking that moment, you'll find that sigma one two minus sigma two one, if the sum of moments is equal to zero, you're going to find that sigma one two minus sigma two one is equal to zero, which means that sigma one two is equal to sigma two one. If I repeat this in the other directions, I will find that also sigma three one is equal to sigma one three, sigma two three is equal to sigma three two, which means that the stress matrix is a symmetric matrix. And this is a consequence of the moment equilibrium of the material. On the website, you have a tool where you can enter the values of the stress matrix and enter the values of a, a normal vector n or a vector n and the, the tool actually normalizes the vector. And then the tool calculates the force or vector per unit area or the traction vector acting on that surface with normal n. And you can try it out and see if you can do it by hand as well. The normal stress is the component of Tn in the direction of n. It is basically this projection. When I project the, the force uh, per unit area vector or the traction vector on the normal to the surface. So this value is the normal stress, which is equal to the dot product between Tn and n. The remaining part is the part that is parallel to the surface and it's called the shear stress vector. The norm of that is equal to the shear stress. So if Tn is decomposed into the normal stress plus the shear stress vector, the shear stress is equal to the norm of this shear stress vector, which is equal to the norm of Tn minus sigma n in the direction of n. On the website, there's a tool given a three-dimensional vector n, which gives me the area vector and given a stress matrix, you input the values of the stress matrix, it will calculate and draw the traction vector Tn, which is equal to sigma transpose n, will calculate the normal stress and the shear stress vector and the shear stress value. And remember, the normal stress, if it's positive, it means that this area is under tension. If it's negative, it means that the area is under compression. The stress matrix is symmetric. Sigma 2 1 is equal to sigma 1 2, sigma 3 1 is equal to sigma 1 3, sigma 3 2 is equal to sigma 2 3. So this value is equal to this, this value is equal to that one, and this one is equal to this one. As we studied in symmetric matrices, there's always a coordinate system in which the 
representation of that matrix is diagonal. And this coordinate system is made out of the eigenvectors of the matrix. So in a coordinate system made out of eigenvector 1, an eigenvector 2, an eigenvector 3 of the uh, matrix, the matrix has a diagonal representation, sigma prime is equal to q sigma q transpose, and this coordinate system, the matrix has components sigma 1, 0, 0, 0, sigma 2, 0, and 0, 0, sigma 2. Where sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3 are these components, and there are no shear stresses. And of course, Q is the corner transformation matrix made uh, using the components of these eigenvectors in the original coordinate system. The eigenvalues of the stress matrix are called the principal stresses, sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. And the principal directions are the eigenvectors of the stress matrix, eigenvalue 1, eigenvalue 2, and eigenvalue 3. And in a coordinate system made out of those eigenvectors, the stress matrix is diagonal, only has three uh, components, the rest are zeros. On the website, you have a tool given the components of the stress matrix. It calculates the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of the stress matrix and then realigns a box perpendicular to the new coordinate system and does a coordinate transformation. And in the new coordinate transformation, it calculates the new stress matrix and the new stress matrix in the new coordinate system is diagonal. Of course, the extension of this in 3D still applies and you have another tool on the website given a stress matrix and after calculating its eigenvectors, we can find the coordinate transformation from the E1, E2, and E3 to EV1, EV2, EV3. In this new coordinate system, sigma prime is equal to Q sigma Q transpose, and it's a diagonal matrix. There are no shear stresses, only the normal stress components.